Hi there, uh, thank you for logging on to my blog. My name is Nazim, Nazim Dolly from Cape Town, South Africa. I'm here to talk about something very important and that is the myths and the misperceptions about fitness, not just in South Africa, but fitness throughout the world. Okay, but just to give you some background as to my accreditations, my qualifications, I'm an ETA certified personal fitness trainer with the Exercise Teachers Academy, Merit Fitness Scholarship Award recipient from the Sports Science Institute of South Africa, as well as fitness author of the book Ripped Dad, Fat Dad, with a catchy subtitle, What the Ripped and Muscular Teach Their Kids About Fitness That the Fat and Obese Do Not. Okay, now in my last post, which was my very first video upload, I spoke about the difference of attitude between my ripped dad, who was my real dad, and my fat dad, who was my best friend's dad. My fat dad uh, was basically somebody that made a lot of money, never made time to exercise, and he always blamed his uh, obesity and his lack of fitness on other people. So he never accepted responsibility, and he always found an excuse not to exercise, not to work out, not to eat healthy, and still felt good about himself. My real dad, who was my, my rip dad, who worked out every single day, he always took responsibility for his state of health and fitness and I'm here today to share with you some inspiration some motivation as to what you can do to stay on the same track as my rib dad once did when he was alive okay so coming to some misperceptions that most people seem to have about fitness okay the first misperception is that I do not have time now I don't know about you but uh, the last time I checked every single person that I know we only have 24 hours in the day Okay, doesn't matter if you're black, doesn't matter if you're white, doesn't matter if you're male or female, we all only have 24 hours in the day. So why is it that people that are fit and healthy, they tend to find time to exercise, but people that are unfit, people that are lazy, people that are overweight that never attain their fitness goal, they just never seem to find the time. In one word, it comes down to priorities, okay? It's not just priorities, it really comes down to how badly you want it. Let us assume that you are a 40-year-old man, you've got a wife, you've got a family, you've got two or three kids, and you know that if you stop working today, you are going to get fired, you're not going to have any income, you're not going to be able to support your wife and family, you know what the risks are, okay? So the reason that you keep working is simply because you know exactly what the stakes are and what will happen if you don't keep delivering. Now likewise, when it comes to fitness, some people just don't have that kind of mentality, okay? There's no one standing behind them with a gun to their forehead saying, hey, if you didn't work out, I'm gonna pull this trigger, or if you didn't work out, you're not gonna be able to support your family. Okay, so it comes down to priorities number one. It comes down to how badly you want it. And thirdly, it comes down to perceived value. Now, with fitness, it's something that happens over a gradual period of time. You cannot start working out today and then expect to have an awesome physique tomorrow. It's not like you can just walk into a shop, pay by credit card, and be sure that you have it all figured out by tomorrow. It doesn't work like that. Fitness is the one thing whereby you have to work for it. And that is why I love this industry so much. It doesn't matter if you're rich, it doesn't matter if you're poor, it means that you have to work as hard as the next guy has, regardless of race, regardless of creed, regardless of money, you're just gonna have your priorities straight. And once you have those priorities straight, you gotta have a game plan. So that's myth number one, not having enough time, okay? You gotta find the time, you gotta make the time. And if you perceive the value to it, I promise you, you will find the time. Me particularly, I like to wake up at 5 a.m. My roommate and I, we go to the gym and we have a good workout. And by the time we get to work, we feel so fired up we feel so motivated to catch on the rest of what the day has to offer because we know that we have just overcome so many odds inside the gym. We've lifted as heavy as we could, we sprinted as fast as we could on the treadmill and therefore we know that whatever else comes next doesn't hold a candle compared to what we do. So it's not just about getting fit, it's about the psychological boost that goes with getting into shape okay so get your priorities straight know what the value is and you know you'll find a way to make time as soon as you connect to what those needs are myth number two it's easier 
in another country. Now, I don't know how people come up with these conclusions, but um, some people seem to think that if you live in a wealthy country, for instance, if you go to the United States, they've got some of the best gyms in the world. A lot of these gyms even boast that they are 24-hour fitness, meaning that you could go at any time, you can go at any hour of the day at 2, 3 a.m., the gym will be open. Now, if it was better in another country, why is it that in spite of 24-hour fitness chains where you can go day or night, that people are unfit, people are unhealthy, they are obese, they are fat, they are some of the worst people in the world when it comes to seeking for a role model, it really doesn't matter where you come from, it's not necessarily better in another country. Again, it comes down to your perception. If you want something bad enough, it's not a thing that you will not do to attain it. If that was a standard to go by, then Ethiopia, one of the poorest countries in the world, will not be producing Olympic level marathon runners that are beating some of the best in the United States, in spite of the amount of money that they inject into 24 hour fitness gyms all across the planet and all across their country. Okay? Myth number three you need a lot of money to be in shape. Now, it is true that some of the best uh, supplements out there do cost money. Organic foods do cost money, and I'm not against that. At the end of the day, what I'm saying is that for you to live a fairly healthy lifestyle, you don't need to earn uh, what a doctor or an engineer needs to earn. Even on a modest income, there are certain exceptions you can make, there are certain foods you can buy, there are certain measures you can put in place to ensure that you get a moderate amount of exercise, that you can get fresh and healthy food, you just need to know where to look. And again, if you want something badly enough, there's going to be a way and a means of finding it. It really comes down to what your priorities are, what your goals are, and what kind of resources you are working at. The other um, misperception out there, and uh, one of the myths that my fat dad <laughs> loved holding on to, is that people that are fit and healthy, or people that are seeking the ideal physique, are shallow people with no personality at all. Now, he would argue that if you want to appreciate somebody, it's just the personality that matters. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, a healthy body reflects a healthy mind. And any of these fitness athletes that are in the best shape of their lives, you cannot tell me that they are shallow simply because <clears throat> the kind of commitment, the kind of dedication that goes into developing a physique like a top bodybuilder or a top fitness athlete or a top uh, figure fitness model, they need to be training at least <clears throat> five to six times a week every single week for at least six to twelve months time to get the kind of figure that they want and with that goes discipline with that goes consistency with that goes an increased sense of motivation and drive and with that also goes a better quality uh, personality okay by being consistent by doing what you need to be doing day in and day out kind of helps you to build a sense of responsibility you start caring for yourself you start looking after yourself and you start feeling good about yourself and this kind of personality starts inculcating itself into other areas of your life as well you'll find that you are becoming a better role model you're setting the example you're getting up at 5 a.m. you know how to prepare your meals for the next day so you are more certain about yourself you've got an actual action plan now you can then start carrying this into other spheres like your career, your work, your personal relationships as well. So anyone that says that fitness athletes and bodybuilders are shallow people, you know, look a bit deep and ask yourself, what are you going to do? Are you going to sit back and uh, watch the television, eat a cupcake or have a hot dog and say that there's another day? You know, you got to do some introspection and ask yourself what's important to you. Again, what's your priority? What is your goal? And what can you learn from fitness athletes? Rather than discriminating, ask what it is that you can learn from them. Another misperception out there is that the media loves to paint this picture in people's minds that you can only be happy by being fit and healthy. And whilst there is some truth to it, you know, we didn't want to get into a culture whereby people are starting to wear size zero dresses, you know, that's just impossible. But at the same time, you also don't want to give off the impression that it's okay to be fat. I think there seems to be a growing trend somewhere in the United States that it's okay to be overweight, that you need to love yourself no matter what. 
which I'm not truly against, you know, you got to love yourself for who you are, but if you feel that you're unhealthily overweight, if you are morbidly obese, start doing something about it. There's a difference between doing slightly overweight or being slightly chubby and still working on it versus being morbidly obese and accepting it and saying that it's okay to be unhealthy, okay? Your body is your temple. You've only got one body to take you through the rest of your life. So do what you need to do to make sure that you are in fit, that you are in fit and healthy shape, that you are looking after yourself and that you are setting an example to the people around you, okay? Inspiration to the nation, that's what it's all about. And the great thing about, um, you know, inspiring other people, it's like President John F. Kennedy said, ask not what the country can do for you, but ask what you can do for the country. And by me sharing this with you, I'm pleased to say that if I'm able to inspire some of you, then you can go on inspiring other people without that taking away any of the knowledge that I've shared with you. And this can go on, it can have a ripple effect. And uh, hopefully we'd be able to inspire some people to start taking uh, a responsibility for the state of health and fitness. I'm going to be sharing some more videos with you as to how you can uh, go about getting into shape, but not just getting into shape, the practical application thereof, but some of the mental techniques that you can use to get ahead in the game. It's not about just lifting weights and running at a certain speed, although those are the uh, mechanical components of fitness. It's all about the mental obstacles, the mental blocks, and what measures you can put in place to ensure that you are staying on the straight and the narrow. My name is Nazim Dali. I want to thank you for listening. Join me again next time on Going the Distance, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Bye-bye.